It is Monday, August 24th. Yesterday we started a new uh, week theme, and that was uh, chapter 37 from the great prophet Ezekiel, the famous passage about the Valley of the Dry Bones. I'm going to be reading you the first three verses of that today. Uh, the setting is um, a vision that Ezekiel had. Ezekiel was a very interesting prophet in that he had amazing uh, trance like visions in which God revealed things to him. And one of these most famous ones is, is uh, he's taken to the Valley of the Dry Bones. Um, let me uh, begin today's devotional by giving you a little background that Ezekiel was uh, an aristocratic character uh, in, in, in also a priest. And he uh, understood well the rituals and life of the temple in Jerusalem. And he became a prophet um, later in life, probably around the age of 30. And he began his uh, career in terms of preaching and teaching and prophesying in 593 BC and ended it in 573, 20 year period. Kind of in the middle of that is 587 when um, the, the people of Israel are, suffer a sacking of the city of Jerusalem and uh, they had had a previous deportation in 597. Ezekiel was part of that deportation where the king, uh, Jehoiakim, and a lot of the court were taken off to live in Babylon. And, and uh, Ezekiel was taken off at that time and was living in Babylon um, in the great city or in an area just outside of it where the Israelites were allowed to settle and in fact own, own houses and begin to uh, participate in the life of that society. Uh, but they grieved the end of uh, the temple practice in Jerusalem, uh, the sort of de decapitation of the political leadership. It was a very difficult time. And then in, in 587 was the destruction of the city. And so Ezekiel prophesies on both sides of that climactic event. Uh, the first 24 chapters, he's anticipating those uh, events and, and uh, predicting that they're going to happen and those are chapters of warning and admonition that the people of Israel have broken their covenant with God and then interestingly in the time of great gloom and doom after these events had happened when everyone was in a great depression we have a series of very hopeful prophecies from Ezekiel about an era of renewal when God will bring his people back restore the land and create a new sense of intimacy with his followers and the Valley of the Dry Bones is part of that set of prophecies that are chapters 33 through 39 in the, the, the book that we have of Ezekiel in the Bible. So let's listen for the word of the Lord. 37 verses 1, 2, and 3. Ezekiel says this, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit, and he set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He led me all around these bones. They were very many in the valley, and they were very dry. And God said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, only you know. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We've done some background. Now we're into this beautiful, powerful metaphor that Ezekiel uses. There are dry bones moments and dry bones places. There are dry bones places. I don't know if you've ever been in one of those. I've been in a few uh, places like Flanders Field in uh, France, where so many young uh, American men had died, British men had died, and Allied soldiers had died. Graves as far as the eye could see, uh, underneath those graves, dry bones. Well, this is kind of a, a place like that, except without the graves. There are just bones that are scattered everywhere. It's as if there's been a great battle, and they've just left the corpses to dry out and uh, and be reduced to dust. And that's the place where Ezekiel has been taken. There are places of uh, where the mood and the sense is, is one of death. I've been in certain wards of hospitals or certain hospice uh, institutions where, you know, they're beautiful places in some ways. There's a lot of care and love, but there's also an atmosphere of impending death and doom in those locations. In a similar way, jail cells are kind of these artificial warehouses where there's artificial light and you go behind a series of doors that are locked one after the other and it's as if you're entering a, a tomb. It's a tomb for the living. There are places of death, there are moments of death when enterprises come to an end, when dreams wither, uh, when relationships enter a rocky phase, 
when jobs are lost, so many are going through that in our economy right now where their jobs are, are either changed or lost. And these are dry bones moments. Ezekiel is taken to this dry bones location and the big question he's asked is a very simple and straightforward one by God. And that question is, can these bones live? And he says, oh Lord, only you are the one who knows the answer to that. Dry bones moments are moments of suffering and difficulty at one level. Uh, they, they are uh, temptations. But they're also tests. They're moments where you and I can learn and develop and change and grow, in particular grow, grow spiritually. Uh, Jesus was taken out by the Spirit to be tempted and tested in the wilderness, the Judean wilderness, in the same way Ezekiel is taken out by God. It's the Spirit that leads him into this place. It's, it's a moment of testing, and the question is, will he have resignation or imagination in this moment? Can he imagine this being a valley of life? Can he see folks rising out of the dust to become real? Does he trust and believe that God, the God who creates can also recreate? These, this is what he's been, being asked to uh, think about. We have the same kinds of questions. When we go to a graveyard, can we imagine the resurrection in those moments? When our church struggles, can we imagine it being renewed? When we're at a place of personal crisis, can we see it and think about our life beyond that moment. Let's take a minute and pray. Lord, we want to be people of great and holy imagination and not resignation, people who can see uh, the blessing within the difficulty, people who can, who can imagine circumstances changing, and people who can trust that the God who creates can also recreate. May it be so for us. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for being with us today.